I'm Jessica here at Nautilus Mission Control at the Inner Space Center in Rhode Island. And we're joined today by the driving force behind the Nautilus, Dr. Bob Ballard. So welcome. Thank you so much for joining us today. It's a pleasure to be ashore. I've had a you know, wonderful time out on the Nautilus. And I'm home for a while, but I head back out very shortly. And I know we've been exploring for about 11 weeks, and we've seen yep. tons of cool stuff. Real cool. Shipwrecks, yep. tripod fish, hydrothermal vents. Some critters. What's been your favorite so far? All of the above. You know, I'm sort of an equal opportunity explorer, although my background is in the earth sciences, so I have sort of have a bias towards planet Earth. But I really love history, and obviously the Titanic turned me on to history, and then we went back further into time, and now finding ancient history and we made some really cool discoveries uh, during the Black Sea Leg of this year. What were the coolest? We found really well-preserved ancient shipwrecks in relatively shallow water, which was a big surprise. So we're finding that the anoxia can actually get up into, onto the continental shelf of the Black Sea, which really increases the probability of finding a lot of highly preserved shipwrecks. And I know we're going to Portugal, yep. Israel, and Italy again next. Yeah, I'll get back aboard uh, once they return from the Atlantic, and I get back aboard when we uh, duck by Sicily again. So I'm looking forward to that. And what should we most look forward to coming Well, up? there it's going to be, you know, it could be any of the above. I mean, one wonderful thing about going where no one has been before, you, you're, you're not really sure what you're going to encounter. We think we're going to encounter a lot of cool geology, but it's also an area we're a lot of Roman history, a lot of Carthaginian history, so there's a good chance we may bump into some ancient history. But our primary goal is to work with the Italian geologists to look at an area where we think there might be active underwater volcanism. Very cool. Yeah. And what I know our, our viewers want to know what's going to happen to the Nautilus next when this season's over. Well, we're going <laughs> to keep making it prettier. I mean, we're going to be uh, putting more funds into it. Uh, we're going to uh, continue the enhancement of the ship, but then we're going to do a very big piece of technological installation, and that's the multi-beam sonar. We're going to put on, a, uh, on a, a, a sonar that can literally make a map at full speed. See, when you go to where no one has gone before, it means no one's gone before you, and so you really need maps to guide you. And you can get sort of a rough idea of what's down there from actually from uh, satellites, but you really need a sonar that can go in there and make a real detailed map that you could actually use to drive your car. Yeah. And so this is really getting the kinds of maps that explorers need to guide the next stage, which is to lower Hercules and Argus in, and see what that bump really is. And where what might we be exploring next? Well, we're going to begin a trip around the world. Awesome. Uh, Nautilus is going to go global. Uh, we're going to be uh, wrapping it up next year. Uh, in the Black Sea and Mediterranean, and then we're going to uh, begin transiting across. We're going to testing our sonar, probably touch base here uh, for just a little while, yeah. and then uh, head down into the Caribbean. Uh, we've got a lot of things we want to do in the Caribbean, and then we'll go through the Panama Canal and go out into the big, big blue Pacific, <laughs> which is a third of our planet, and probably spend quite a number of years working between Capricorn and Cancer and Hawaii and Singapore. Uh, to areas that are largely unexplored. And, you know, 80% of the s southern hemisphere is oceans, more so than the northern hemisphere. And the southern hemisphere is the least explored. So we want to go to this really unexplored area where it looks pretty crazy and see what's there. And I know we have a lot of excited fans out there. Is there anything that you want to say to them? Well, I, well, I always <laughs> say to my fans, follow your passion. As you know, we have all sorts of people involved in our program. Some some are oceanographers, we have people like yourself who are really into, into media, into communications. We have people running ships. Really what I think is pretty cool is that uh, the, the, the diversity of people involved in what we do. If you look at, go to our website, uh, uh, www.nautiluslive.org, <laughs> and look at who's aboard. And then read about them and see who the pilot's background is or see the video engineer's background. And you're going to see that it's very diverse. And I know you've done some walkabouts mm -hmm. on the Nautilus, and you find all sorts of fascinating people there. There's a place for everyone. There is a place for everyone. And I think people need to know that, that, yeah. that there's all sorts of ways that you can get in the game. And you just need to find that person that emulates what you want to be and figure out how they did it. 
Yeah, well, thank you so much for joining us today. My pleasure, and I look forward to seeing you back on the big screen. <laughs> Again, I'm Jessica here at Nautilus Mission Control. Stay tuned at nautiluslive.org. And now back to the action on the ship.